by us being in a long distance relationship, it also accelerated our communication. Now, since we can't actually see each other, but every two, two and a half weeks, a lot of that communication happened over the phone. And I felt like we got to know each other on a much deeper level. One of the best things was that actual blog. We were in marriage conversations mm. every day. Right. And we were learning from Time. therapists. We were learning from specialists, but we were learning from couples. We learned a lot about marriage that didn't have to be from us. Right. Because it's people's intention to break you apart. Right. And sometimes those people are friends. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's family. Black. And sometimes it can even be your own children. So one of the best things we could do is no matter what was going on behind the scenes, we said, hey, we're going to stand together united and we're going to make sure that can't nobody see the cracks in the foundation because people see the cracks, they will try to exploit them. <laughs> What's up, family? Welcome to another episode of The Love Lens. Make sure to take a moment to subscribe and hit all the notifications to tune in every single week. So today I have a really, re one of my favorites, right? One of my favorite people in this world, Lamar Tyler, someone that I've known for a very long mm -hmm. time, right? So I, I want to say over a decade. And um, he is someone that I have the utmost respect for in business and in relationships. So Lamar is the founder of Traffic Sales and Profits. He has done amazing things with his wife in this world when it comes to relationship. And I'm just really excited to see you here. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good. Thank you for the invite. Hey. <laughs> All right. So let's get into it, right? So one of the biggest things people talk about is being a couple, Right. A couple in business. But before we even get there, mm -hmm. I want to I want to get to the 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 love story. Right. I want to know how did you know that Ronnie was the one? Like, how did you meet her? All the good stuff. Let's start there. Yes. We met through a mutual friend. Ooh. Right. So tell, introduction. Yeah. Right. Ladies, yeah. like don't discount your, your friends. You yes. know what I'm saying? Um, so we met through a mutual friend. She had gone to school with her elementary, middle, high school. Oh, wow. And I was working with her now. Okay. Right. Um, so her friend had to get together at her house, had some of the co-workers over, some of her old friends over. Mm. And that was the first time we met. But we didn't really meet that. Oh. We met like, hey, how you doing? Hi. You know, mm. good to see you. Um, but then about a month later, right, it was like a gathering of all the friends again. Mm -hmm. And that's the first time we kind of really talked, got into a little bit. At the time, I had a uh, traveling job. Okay. Uh, and she was living, I was in D.C. area where I'm from. Um, she was in um, Newport News, Virginia area. That sounds far. Like Hampton, Virginia Beach. Yeah, it was for me. Yes. Um, but I was I was traveling, so I knew I had to come to Norfolk. I said, hey, you know, when I'm in your city, um, let's hook up. Let's go to, you know, dinner or something like that. She mm -hmm. said yes. Okay. So... We did it. Now, what she always complains about is that I didn't call her between oh. then and then. But what I said is when I come to your city, yeah, I call you. we're going to connect. I said, that's a man of his word. Mm, I guess. It all depends on how you yeah, look at her, right? No, like, you ain't call her in between. That sounds real convenient. When I go to this city, I might call somebody else. That, you know? that wasn't what it was. No? I was working. Okay, you was working. Working on my craft or my trades. We'll call it that. So, okay. But it was good. It was good. It was good. It's two months later, we, oh, we go out. Uh -huh. um, we had an amazing dinner. We had dinner, right? A uh, soul food spot, um, but a restaurant. Not yeah. like carry out, right? She had to, you know, let's go to a place, soul food spot, restaurant. They had a uh, spoken word. Okay. Use spoken that loosely because it was like bad. You know what I'm saying? It's like anybody can come and it was like anybody <laughs> came, right? But, um, but you know, we, we uh, had a great night. But there was an issue. What was the issue? The issue was that she lived too far. She lived too far. She that was the far. issue? That was the issue. But How far did she live? She lived two and a half hours. Drive, right? Like, I don't know the people watching going to think that's far, but that was far for me, right? Because I had a rule. Oh, snap. Don't judge me. I'm judging you. I feel like this is going wrong already. There's all the judgment. Look, right? So, I, so I, had a, I, had a, I had a loose rule. This, this rule... So, so where I'm at in D.C. area, a lot like Atlanta and a lot like, you know, L.A., people live, they deal with traffic oh, yeah. every day. So I'm driving, you know, when I'm in the city and I'm working in the city, I'm driving like an hour, hour and a half to and from work every day. And that's a lot. So when I would meet somebody in the D.C. area, they live like 45 minutes away. I'd be like, man, that young lady is lovely. But I can't do like traffic to date. You know what I'm saying? Like traffic 
the in the morning traffic. Y'all with me, right? Like, I, I can't do that. <laughs> it's like, it's just too much. I'm like, man, like, she really is lovely, great personality. Mm. Yeah, but she live on the other side of the county. So oh, I'm no. just going to find people in this part of the county. How was that working for you? Um, You know, it was cool. I ain't find a wife. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it was, uh, <laughs> my dating life was cool. I ain't find a wife, right? So I don't know, right? 50-50. But, you know, you mentioned the very beginning, like, how do I know she was the one? Yeah. Uh, this is one thing I always tell, and I would always tell women, is like, men know when you are the one. Ooh. Come it's, on. it's clear. It's and clear. for me, I knew she was the one because when I met somebody and I went from, I don't date women in my own county mm. that live on the other side of the county because it's going to be 40, 45 minutes just to see them, yeah. to now every two weeks I'm driving two and a half hours down I-95. drive. Come on. I knew something was different, mm -hmm. right? But on top of that, not only did I know something was different, I knew I had to make a decision in a shorter amount of time. Okay. Because I knew I could not drive two and a half hours for the next four, five, ten years, right? right? Like that. Right. It's those two work. things can't coexist. Right. <laughs> so it, it forced me um, to say, hey, is this thing really serious or not? Mm. And also by us being um, in a, a sort of long distance relationship, I feel like it also accelerated our communication. Okay. Because in, in my normal and... dating life, when I got familiar with somebody, you know, it turns to like a lot of house dates, right? Mm. Like, oh, let's watch TV. Let's watch right. a movie. Let's go to the movie. Watching. Go to dinner. But a lot of that stuff, you're watching, you're not communicating. Yeah. You're just sitting there. Even if you go out to the movie, right? Yeah. It's like, like how much are you actually talking outside of the movie? Exactly. But now since we can't actually see each other, but every two, two and a half weeks, um... You know, like like a lot of that communication happened over the phone. Yes. I don't know what's your demographic. People might be like, people talk on the phone. What is that? No, people talk on the phone still. People still talk on the phone. We like talking on the phone more than texting. But but yeah. but that those talks on the phone led to we had to create things to talk about. Mm. So in that I felt like we got to know each other on a much deeper level because we communicated more than I feel like we would have if we were side by side in the same city. Oh, that's good. You know, I'm all about the deeper conversations. Let me insert the love deck. Here we go. <laughs> 60 questions to ask before choosing the one, right? So when we start to talk about deeper conversations and now you're dating, you're making a decision. Now, how did that decision come across? Like, hey, girl, I'm not driving this far no more. So what's up? Like, what, what, what exactly was that conversation like? You know, I sat her down and I said... <laughs> What's up, fuck me? Sat her down. I sat her down. I sat her down. down. I said, like, check, check this out. <laughs> I said, I'm putting way too many miles in this car, way too much. That's not what I said. It's not what I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I mean, I don't, I don't even remember. It's like a long time ago now. Yeah. Um, but it's it, more like it was, in, it was more like an internal thing. Yeah. Like, hey, you know, like, am I serious? She, is she the one? Like, what does this look like? And in doing that, you know, we've been having conversations yeah. about relationships, about um, how serious you were about each other. At times, she had two children. So, pause, of course... Pause. So, there's many women that have kids that feel like that's a hindrance to love. Like, love is over. Like, it can't happen because they've had kids or had a serious relationship or been married before. So, was that a deterrent for you at first? Did that scare you at first as a... You didn't have kids before, Ron, right? I did not. Right. So, like, now you're stepping in. Like, do you have to be a new dad? Like, tell us a little bit about what was going on in your mind to to come together with someone who had kids. It didn't bother me. Ah. And it didn't bother me for, for two reasons. Okay. For one, um, I grew up with a single mother, right? Mm. So my mother um, and father, they were married when I was born. But I was the youngest of three boys, so they probably divorced. <clears throat> so they probably divorced when I was, like, two or three years old. Okay. Um, but then my mother got remarried. Mm. So I'm like, that's crazy me to be like, I don't want no woman with kids and somebody marry my mother with kids, right? right. But then on top of that, uh, when I met Ronnie, I probably was like mid-20s, getting to late 20s. And most of the women I was meeting had children. Okay. So for me, I also felt like, you know, what I'm going to carve off a huge part of the population of amazing women mm -hmm. um, because they have a child. And them having a child was something that didn't bother me. Nice. Like that didn't scare me off. It didn't make me be like, ooh, I'm shook. Yeah. I'm nothing like that. Like, yeah. it, it, it didn't really bother me. How does she show up as a single mom? Like, did she say, I'm looking for a daddy for these kids? No, but that's one of the things that attracted me was that she was already a great mom. Okay. She was already a great mom and already holding it down. Yeah. So, it, in no part of my mind did it dawn on me, oh, she she's coming in to get me because she need me to help right. take care of, like, that wasn't the play. Beautiful. So, and, and I was very cognizant of that, mm -hmm. right? And at the same time, I got to see um, how great of a mother she already was. 
So as I'm thinking about, you know, because I know I wanted children as well, additional children. So, if you know, I could see if I was dating someone in like, oh, what kind of wife would she be? Because you're one of those kind of things. What kind of mom would she be? Yeah. Well, I already saw the mom part checked off oh, and yeah. already saw that she was an amazing mom. So in my mind, I'm thinking like, hey, you know what? You know, we get married and we have children together. Like, I already know what that looks like because I see it every day. Right. So that was actually a bonus. Definitely so. Wow. Are you someone that goes to all the conferences? You know, you get your CEUs for your job. You're always up leveling in personal development. I'm going to tell you one thing. You need your CEUs in love. Join me for Wanted Woman Live, the ultimate non-conference, unconference experience, three days in sunny South Florida this fall. This is an experience where women come together from all over the country to be able to be poured into all around love. How do you show up in love? How do you receive love? How do you just have fun with love? Join the sisterhood, an amazing experience created and curated just for you, the professional woman that desires Moy. Click the link below, wantedwomanlive.com. Okay. All right. So now we're trying to close the gap. You're closing the gap of coming together. Who moved? She moved from Virginia to Maryland this year. Okay. All right. So now, okay, let's fast forward. You're starting a company, your first company together. Can you tell us a little bit of what that was for y'all to say we're going into business together? Because according to the statistics, couples that go into business together have more fights, more stress, more problems, all the things, all the mores. So what made you say, you know, we're going to do this thing together versus it's just being you and I'll support you? Yeah, um... What happened is I was pitching different ideas to my job. They weren't getting a hold of it. They couldn't see the vision. So one day I came home and told her, you know, I'm going to stop giving them my million dollar ideas and we're going to create a million dollar business. Ooh, that's and, a good sales pitch to a wife. I tell you that. Yeah, I don't think she can, though. <laughs> um, but because uh, me, I'm, you know, entrepreneur, always wanted to be an entrepreneur was was like for, you know, probably from the time I was in school beyond trying to figure out what entrepreneurship looked like. Cause I didn't know anybody directly that was one. Yeah. So I was trying to like figure it out, get a hold of it, reading black enterprise was it trying different things. Some, all right, some successful, some not, but trying to work through it. Uh, if I can go back to one second, while we, cause this, this is, Oh, this is a, this is a big piece. Come on. You want this? Yes. I never shared this publicly. Ooh. Do y'all want it? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh -huh. so you made me think it's, it's been a minute, right? Uh -huh. But, as we were dating and going through it, one of the conversations we kept having was about the way we both were employed because mm. we were exact opposites. Okay. She went to college, got her bachelor's, went, got her master's, got a job working for IBM wow. and worked at one job. Whole time. I was like, what are you waiting on? Go watch. Like, well, like, what are you? <laughs> what is this? Right, right. Me, on the other hand, I want to be an entrepreneur, but I'm still like game. I'm like, I don't know how long that's going to take. So I'm, I'm in IT. But when I'm in IT, I was a career contractor. Mm. So that means I just did three, six months, maybe nine months at the most. Oh, wow. I wouldn't take a one year contract. Oh, my goodness. Because I like doing different things, seeing different things. I got bored. In those places. So Let's pause. Pause right there. Because for some women, they'd be like, wait, he can't hold one job? Like, I don't know. <laughs> they'd be scared. Would y'all be scared? Like, I don't know about this. Okay, Ashley, yes. Yeah, yeah. We got two out of four. Okay, go ahead. And that's what I've, I was trying to. So that's where communication come in, right? Yeah. And, and communication and compromise. Mm. Right, C and C. Okay. So what happened was we're having these conversations. And I'm, I'm trying to explain to her. Well, for one, I could easily get it. Because... Most places I'm going, I'm rocking it, and they're trying to offer me to come on permanent, but I'm saying, nah, you know, I'm good. So, but she can't, this person only had one, one job. job, ain't never tried to move. She's trying to work her way to head a global operation. I don't know what she's doing, right? Right. But she like, like, I just don't understand this, and it doesn't make me feel comfortable. Because okay. she's very conservative. Yeah. And wants, like, that safety, security piece. Yeah. So, um, we talk, she's like, hey, what happens if you, like, don't get a contract? Ooh. And I'm like, if I don't get a contract, ain't a, big, ain't a big deal, right? I got money from other contracts. But she's like, but then what happens if you don't get one? Yeah. And I'm like, that ain't a big deal either. I just take a lower rate. I just take one below my rate for a short amount. Of, like, I, like, to me, yeah. all of Make it, it made total sense. To her, it made no sense. Mm. So That's I had to compromise to begin with. What was your compromise? I took a full-time straight W-2 job. Did you want to jump off a bridge? Oh, I did. I hated it. <laughs> and the first time, I, I quit. 
quick. Because it's just like a job. After how long? I was overqualified. I don't even remember. It was just bad. I was overqualified. Dude walked in the office one day. I, I like would do the work because in a fraction of the time I do it, be sitting there bored. And I remember manager walked in one day and was like, like, what do you want to do? What do you want to progress, Tyler? Like, what's going on? Mm. And I was like, the only position I could progress to is yours. Mm. So <laughs> I'm like, it's nothing here for me. But it was, <laughs> and on top of that, I'm driving an hour and a half to and from work again every day. Right. So I, I leave, but I end up at another spot um, running IT for a TV department. It's great. It's different every day. It gave me the excitement I need. Yeah. And I stayed there for five years, and that was the longest job I ever had. Wow. But in doing that, what it gave her was security. Okay. And what it gave her was trust that, hey, you know, everything he said he was when we talked, he actually is that. Yeah. So then by the end of that five years, when now I'm saying, hey, I got an idea. Now we start um, our first business, which is a brand, which is a blog, blackandmarywithkids.com. And we start that again because I'm frustrated at work. I said, we're going to build our own thing. What's something we can do? Let's create a blog. This is 2007. It is not like now. Right. Information ain't readily available everywhere. I'm like, I heard somebody in California may have made money, yeah. but it ain't like trails and courses and coaches. Yeah. So we said, let's do it. What's something we passionate about? Right. I said, I only want to write about stuff that people want to read about because mm -hmm. otherwise I don't want to do it. And we were always having these relationship talks like this at our home with friends I bring my boys over. Some of our girls come. We talk about this. Yeah. Let's talk relationships. What about it? Marriage. What about it? The way black marriage is viewed inside and outside the black community. Mm. So we started it. We launched it. Um, and it took off. But then by the time it took off and it was time to look at it in a full-time lens, the lady that was super conservative trusted me. Aww. But she trusted me because I made that compromise five years earlier. Yeah. And showed her that I was who I said I was. Mm. And that she could trust me to do the rest of the way. The proof is in the pudding. Oh, that's oh, that's good. That was good, right? Oh, my goodness. All right, so. <laughs> okay, so here it is. Y'all started this blog together. So now are you essentially full-time with the blog and the Black and Married? And then she's working full-time at the job, 9 to 5? Yeah, what happened, Um, when we originally started, we were doing like two articles a week. Then she might write something every now and then. I was doing most like the tech stuff and doing all, all the stuff in it. Um, then we started writing like five times a week, like one day, once every day, Monday to Friday, we're putting stuff out. Mm. Then we had a couple writers. Then we grew to like 40 writers and then mm. a full time editor, like all this. So it's like a business business. And we get to a point where we have to have a talk as a couple. Yeah. Because I remember earlier that year, like January that year, I'm like, we're getting more and more opportunities. Brands are coming to us. People want to fly us out and do stuff with us. And here's the problem. I've only been working this place for a couple of years. You know how much vacation I got? You know how much? Two weeks. Two weeks. Right. She been working there for an eternity. She got like a month and a half of vacation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm telling her at some point this year, by the looks of it, I'm going to run out of leave. Yeah. And then either the business is not going to grow because I'm locked in to the W-2. Right. Or... I'm not going to be giving my all to the W2 and that's going to be a risk anyway because like, like we've got to make a decision. Yeah. Wanting to see the growth. So we decided as a couple, um, let's get ready. First thing we did was pay down all our debt. Perfect. Right? Yeah. I know people like, you know, I'm just called, I'm a faith that I'm going to jump out there. No, mate. <laughs> right? We paid off all our debt, paid off the car, paid off the credit cards, made everything happen, right? Nice. Uh, we were generating some revenue in the business, but not enough to match either one of our salaries. We both yeah. had six figure salaries. Oh boy. So okay. the business might have been doing like 70, 75K, and that was just enough to validate that it could be a business, mm. but in no way after expenses that match either one of ours, because we got debt down, we could kind of go out and do it, right? So we made a plan together as a couple. Yeah. And this part wild, because I see a lot of stuff on the internet now that don't that don't match up. I don't know. Maybe talk about that later. But as a couple, we sit down and make a plan. So the plan is for me to go full time into the business and grow it. Because right now I'm working in the business like nine o'clock at night to two, three in the morning. Oh, man. But now we got four kids because we had two. When we got married. Yeah. We had two more within the first two years. Mm. So we got four kids all under the age of 11. So by the time, you know, she worked from home already. So by the time I get home, she already had the kids. She already made dinner. It takes me an hour and a half to get home from work. So when I come in, it's already dinner time, go from dinner time to bath time, bath time to bedtime. And we can't start working the, the business until 9, 10 o'clock at night till I'm falling asleep on the keyboard, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., mm. you know, doing those things to make it happen. So we're saying in our conversation, 
if I could just respond to people's emails in a day and not at 10 o'clock at night, we should make more. If I could just be consistent and not be dead tired when I'm working, we should make more. And that's what happened, right? We made that plan. I exited. Went full time into the business. We validated, hey, it could make some money. And then we grew. And then we started to double the size of the business every year. And the, the hardest part was not growing the business. The hardest part following that was getting her to leave her job and come into the business. Oh, boy. Right? The one that's been at one job her whole life. So now, just talking about the ebb and flow, right? So you're coming home. You're not there. She cooked the dinner. Everything happened. You're there for bedtime. But then now it's working. Like, was that a strain on your relationship or was it like a cool understanding? Everything was calm and copacetic. Yeah, I don't know if everything was calm and copacetic because at that time we still dealing with new, like the business wasn't the issue. Mm. Our marriage was the issue. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, yeah. like regardless, you know, and people, uh, you know, as you mentioned, always say, well, you know, like a lot of couples that are married get divorced. Mm-hmm. I say a lot of couples that got regular jobs get divorced. Right. Right. Like, so like, like our issues and problems in our marriage wasn't around the company mm-hmm. or trying to grow a brand. Yeah. Issues were around the fact that we had a step family mm-hmm. and we faced blended family issues. Mm-hmm. We had um, uh, unfulfilled expectations of each other. You know, we had communication issues. Yeah. We had outside people, naysayers, putting their vote, voice in and their vote in on what should happen with our marriage and, and, and you know, what we should do and not do, how we should parent, not parent, mm-hmm. and all these other outside forces. So the business actually probably was the easiest part at that time. So then how did you solve some of those main issues? Was it therapy? Was it just y'all read a book together? Did you go to a conference? Was it reading your own blogs? Like what what was it that helped you to get on one accord or get through that? One of the best things was that actual blog. Mm. Because since we had the blog, we were in marriage conversations Mm. every day. Right. And we were learning from therapists. We were learning from specialists. But we were learning from couples that it was just made it happen and, and was doing their thing. And, um, like that was the beauty of community. Yeah. And you could see people that had been, and we learned like a lot, like in a short amount of time because of that website, we learned a lot about marriage that didn't have to be from us. Right. But then, you know, we would read books, we would talk to people, we would meet different, you know, some of the, the field's top experts. And the, the best thing we could do from being in that community and, and meeting other couples is realizing that the issues we face were regular. Because when you face blended family, step family issues, you think you're the only one going to it, going through it because nobody else is talking about it. Right. When you're facing communication issues, when you're dealing with like we can't get together and we bumping heads. Right. Because most of the time we're not talking to other people about the issues going inside our home. We think it's unique to us. Exactly. When we started the site, we like everybody going through this. Everybody. And we seeing people like this stuff way worse than us. Mm-hmm. So if they can make it, we'd be all right. You're going to be fine. Which, you know what? So just like I started the Real Love Network, right? So in terms of creating community, especially for single women, you know, I found that I was having the same conversations over and over again. So now that we have this community, it's not a man bashing situation. It's more of like, wow. I didn't know somebody else felt like that or was mm-hmm. going through that. And let's help each other versus doing this in a silo by ourselves. So that's good. Okay, that's good. Power, All right. That's a power community. Yeah. And, and I, I'll just say real quick, too. By going through those different things, the best part was that we stuck together mm. and we stayed together because mm-hmm. it's people's intention to break you apart. Right. And sometimes those people are friends. Mm hmm that are close with you that don't want to see you in that relationship for whatever reason. Yeah. Because maybe they're not happy. They don't want you to be happy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's family. Yeah. For whatever reasons. When we talk about step families and blended families, a lot of times you got a rogue other parent out there roaming in the wild that doesn't want to see you happy, right? (laughs) Yeah. Like all these things. And sometimes it can even be your own children Mm. that don't want to see you happy. Ouch. So one of the best things we could do is no matter what was going on behind the scenes, we said, hey, we're going to stand together united. We're going to lock arms and we're going to make sure that can't nobody see the cracks in the foundation because people see the cracks, they will try to exploit them. Oh, that's good. I remember at my wedding, we got married in Mexico and we had everybody stand up and like do a pledge that said Mm. they would not try to break up our marriage like we had everybody mm. repeat after me <laughs> you know so this is all of our closest friends and family and i'm very grateful that we're coming up on year 10 and we haven't faced anything too crazy because there was an understanding you yeah. know like and and one of the things i joke andy don't like it when i say this though i'm like look the only way you're leaving is in a box you know i'm real i'm real resolute with this whole situation we we together <laughs> yeah, it's good 
I'm, I'm also scary. Jamaican. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Mess around if you want to. Okay. All right. So now, so now you guys have to talk about her going full time in the business. Where's the security? So did you put a whole bunch of money in a bank account to show her? Because I know when we did, we did like Financial Peace University. Mm -hmm. And Andy was like, if there's this certain amount of money in a bank account, I'm a little bit more peaceful. Otherwise, it's stressful to me, you Mm -hmm. know, and you know, I like a trip. I like to go on vacation. And he's like, stop this. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So we had to come to an understanding of how much money in the bank account would allow us to freely do what we wanted to do. So what, what helped her to come to the, okay, I could do this. It was a process okay. because it wasn't just like one conversation. I mean, this might have been like a two year Uh. process of me basically saying, because now the business is making money. Right. It's like it's growing. Like I said, we we almost like, you know, boom, we like double from 75 to 150, 150 to like 250, 300. Like the business is growing. Yeah. But we're getting to a point where I'm telling her, like, I actually need you and your skill set in the business. Right. Um, Uh. When we work together, high service, like I'm kind of like a vision. I, I'm the idea person, big idea person. She's a project manager by trade. Right. So by trade, what she does is actually take ideas, break them down into processes, and then allows to actually implement, mm-hmm. integrate. Mm-hmm. So I'm telling her, like, like at this level, the things that I see her good at every day. Mm-hmm. If we had that in the business, we could take off and go to the next level. Right. But for her, it was not the scared. Like she can see the money coming in, she can do all of that. We have always been totally open and honest with financials. Like that's not a thing. But it still was just like was not normal for her. Right. She never said, hey, I want to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Like she was already living out her dream dream and her goal. Like, hey, I'm going to get a good job. And go watch. Yes. And I don't know. You know, I I still don't understand it. But whatever she was trying to do, she was doing it. Right. Yeah. So it literally took like probably two years of me just being consistent and pushing and saying like, hey, like, yeah, this is cool. But if I had your skill set, a hundred percent, not like, you know, she's, she's doing stuff. So she's like, um, helping out. Yeah. But it's different between helping out and being in the business, 100%. right? Because she's given her best, like her bulk of her hours to this company. Mm-hmm. So finally how it happened is, um, they were doing layoffs Ooh. all around her. But year after year, they kept laying off everybody but her. And I'm like, will you please tell these people to lay you off? Like, like I'm like, you know, I call me y'all. Like, send me a sign. Right. It's like everybody getting laid off, right? Yeah. Like, so eventually, she said yeah, and then when she agreed, they still wouldn't lay her off. Like, like she agreed, like okay, I'm I'm mentally ready and prepared right. to go do it. And like they just dotting everybody around, her. and it it took her going to her manager. Why is your manager wouldn't wouldn't do anything? She went to the the boss, butter boss, mm. and said, "Hey, I'm uh, you know y'all laying all people that want to stay here. Yeah. I want to leave. I want to do whatever." Um, so they eventually laid her off. You know, gave her severance. Nice. They gave us a little bit of runway. Yeah, and the rest is history. Wow. But but I'll say this: I still commend her because again, what you got to watch for is naysayers and people around your marriage. Mm-hmm. So in that same time that I left my job to start the business working full time. Yeah. There's people around her telling her she was crazy. Right. Right? There's people around telling her like, oh, you got this man living off of you. Mm. Which, I don't like that crap. Yeah. Because you know I'm a hard working dude. Mm-hmm. Like, I've always been a hard working dude, right? Ain't nobody ever took care of nothing for me, right? So, I ain't like them kind of, them kind of conversations rub me all the wrong way. Yeah. But, she ain't listened to that mess. That's good. And look at where we are today. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, that's deep because I, I have so many scenarios that I've I've seen um, over the years of how family will tear apart something good, you know. And when you know it's something good, you have to be able to protect it. So I love Definitely. the fact that y'all came together and locked arms and say, you know what, we're not going to pay attention to these folks. So did you literally say stop talking to the folks or did you talk about it internally? Like, how did you get through those conversations with the moms, the aunts, the cousins, the friends? Like, did you distance yourself? Did you stop answering the phone? Like, what was that process like? Um, we had a lot of internal conversations because okay. always say like in relationships, you got to make sure that 
each other's heads are clear. Because mm-hmm. it's easy, again, right, for people to see cracks, create the cracks, see the cracks, and then exploit y'all and then pull you pull yeah. you apart. So you always have to make sure that y'all are on the same page, moving in the same direction, having the same goals for your family, your life, your children, your relationships. Okay, so since you have a plethora of experience when it comes to Black and married and just seeing so many issues that couples have had, what would you say are like the top three things that you've seen couples demise, like? mess couples up. Yeah, it it was um it's 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 five to four or five, right? It's like four or five top things, right? Communication is always number one. Mm-hmm. It was interesting a lot of times, even if it's other things, couples in their mind it boils down still to communication. Right. Um so communication, infidelity, right, which is cheating, um, intimacy or lack of intimacy, right? And that spark kind of being missing and and somebody or both of you needing that back. Uh money is a big one. And then that, that like step family blended family piece right. wreaks havoc. And especially when we start to say, hey, you know what? In communities of color, we get married later and we have a high divorce rate, which means oftentimes when we go into a relationship, somebody already got kids. Mm-hmm. But again, what, I, what we also found is that's the conversation that happens the least. Yeah. It's like people talk about, oh, we ain't having sex. And you'll talk about it with your girlfriends or, you know, a dude to tell another dude, hey, you know, man, like, yeah, we ain't doing this crazy, whatever. <laughs> The conversation we found out couples weren't talking about was that step family piece. Wow. Because there was a lot of built in shame around it. Wow. And then there weren't resources for it because all the resources were about remarriage. Yeah. Hey, you know what? You were married, you had kids, and when you get remarriage, this is what you got to do. Right. But we saying, like, ain't, you know, we got kids, ain't neither one of us ever been married. Right. So this is not us like already knowing what marriage is like. Mm-hmm. We're learning what step family is like. At the same time, we're learning how to be married. Mm. That's a lot. And that's and that's common in our communities. Yeah. So what what would you say is like um a key or steps to to getting through that or coming together as a blended family? Because you know, you got kids that be like, that ain't my daddy, right? You know, like yeah. all of that. One know? of the most helpful things we learned uh from one of the foremost experts in the country around it was that oftentimes it could take as old as your child is for that to actually become the norm Ooh. and settle. So if I got a 10-year-old child, Ooh. it could take 10 years. Mm. before things actually blend. And I think a lot of time we go in thinking like, okay, you know what? I'm going to be a mom. I'm going to be a dad. And I'm going to be all this. Buy some ice and cream. that kid will let you know quickly. As soon as something happens, you ain't my daddy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> aye, aye. You ain't my mama. Mm. Who are you? just a lady from the streets. No. You know what I'm saying? I mean, but they but, but they going to they gonna let you know. I mean, kid, kids know how to push buttons. Anybody know kids know how to push buttons? <laughs> They they know how to push buttons and make things happen. But just learning that one thing said, okay, you know what? Like, maybe we aren't as doing this as bad as we think we are. And maybe things are just going to take time. Right. And we went through some rocky periods with um, uh, my oldest son mm. where, you know, when um, we got married, he was, uh, he might have been 11 when we met, like 13 when we married. Um, so. Like, went through some rocky times with him kind of coming into adolescence, which is a rocky, just I tell people, Period. raising kids is rocky in general. Yeah. So if you have a, a young boy, he going to try to test you at some point. But then if you're not his actual biological dad, like, it just compounded. Mm-hmm. If you a stepmom, right, that son of that daughter, like that daughter coming up, going to try to test you with, oh, I'm sorry. You may have known that was coming. Not the sweet little Ava. But other other little daughters try to test their moms mm-hmm. at some point, right? When they start feeling themselves, they get around the teenage years. Mm-hmm. But you add in the component of you not being that child's biological parent. Right. So what my son, like it really was, you know, us going through that friction. Yeah. Having outside noise from his biological side yeah. outside of it. Right. And then on top of it, just like him, hormones and things raging. But now, like, that's my man. Now, every time, hey, this is my pops, you know, blah, blah, blah. Oh. Introducing people, coming up, hanging out, love, bragging about us, all that type of thing. But that's like 20 years later. Yeah, right. It took, it took time. It definitely, okay. and it took time of him maturing. Yeah. And our relationship maturing yeah. and how we interact with each other. With my daughter, it was actually the opposite. Because mm. when I came into her life, uh, she might have been like two, might have been like four when we got married. Yeah. So I, it was a time when... 
she actually, and we always try to communicate it to her, but she would get me and her dad mixed up. And she thought I was the biological. And him, he was actually stepdad because I was the one that was there all the time doing all the things. Oh, snap. My daddy did not like that. Oh, no. <laughs> they never do, right? But, you know. Whatever. Anyway, I go, yeah, I go to most of that. But it's like, you know, it's it's that piece. Mm-hmm. But then as she got older into teenage years, then it became different oh. with her. So we thought like, hey, you know, we got to, you know, like mature and go through the stuff with our son, but she good. Mm-hmm. But it's it ebbs and flows. And as we learned about step families, that's we learned that that's normal. It ebbs and flows. You know, we we interviewed a couple for uh, uh, a movie we did called Blended. Yeah. The unspoken truth about step families. And the wife was talking about her stepson would go into their room when they weren't there. Right. Go into her dresser, pull out her makeup and then cut all her brushes. Oh. Like, so, so, just the things is wild in these step family streets. But you got to really resolve, again, you got to resolve that, hey, we're going to be together. We're going to make it happen. We're going to make sure the kids got what they need. But like, like this thing right here is the nucleus to make it happen. So now you as a man, how did you not let it attack like your ego? Right. Like, oh, I'm trying so hard. I'm trying to make this happen. These kids aren't accepting the family, the, these exes, you know, like how did you, I guess, fortify yourself in this process to stay strong? The main thing was through her mm. because she didn't bend down to the naysayers. Ah. And I respect her because I know how hard that had to be. Yeah, Because I know how hard it is if your friends, if your family, if everybody coming at you, like I, I know how that got to be difficult because you in the middle. Right. And, and on one side, you got your husband. On one side, you got your children. On one side, you got all these other people. Yeah. Who ain't really got a stake in it at all. Mm-hmm. Right? And and you're being poor and you're trying to do the best thing for everybody. Right. So the fact that I saw her um, not bending in the pressure that I know a lot of people would, mm-hmm. like, like that gave me more resolve to love her even more. So beautiful. Okay. All right. <laughs> Come on, Ronnie. All right. So now she's sticking up for you because I find that in other situations where if you don't feel like she was sticking up for you, that would have been a real problem. Oh, yeah, definitely. Right. So as for those. And and, and then that definitely would have been ego problem. Yeah. Because the thing is, I know that everything everybody's saying ain't true. Right. I know that I'm a hardworking dude. Mm. I know that. I got vision. I know that I'm a lead. Like, I know all those things. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, I don't really care what nobody else say. All I care about is what one person think. I... So if that one person would have thought otherwise, that would have been a major thing. Because in all of this, like, we going through crap every day. And and one of the things I, I learned from, you know, um, Black and Mary with Kids, when we had that brand as we were running it, was that we had seen families and couples go through anything you could think of and still make it through. Wow. And what we realized is that in order for that to happen, you had to have two people that resolved that we're going to do whatever it takes to make it through, which meant the counseling, the coaching, the doing something that seemed crazy, but you got to make your spouse feel comfortable because you've broken the trust at some point and you've done different things. Yeah. Like, like we saw couples that resolved to make it happen. And then after the rockiest parts of their relationships, now, 10, 15, 20 years later, they still here with a better relationship than they had before. Wow. So we knew what was possible. Yeah. At the same side, we also saw more junk and trash than we ever imagined mm. could happen in relationships. Yeah. And we saw people that had no business being together. Ooh. So in that, we knew that we could make it happen. We knew that we could be together. We just had to stay on that same page. So at the end of it, no one is immune. That's one of the biggest things that I've mm. learned. Like, I've been a part of, like, the same group of married couples for, like, the last 10 years. And, you know, you see marriages get tested. And you're like, oh, not them. That's the perfect couple. Not them. They pray every night together. You know, all the things. And that's when Andy and I looked at each other like, look, ain't nobody immune. If they went through it, yes. we could go through it. So it's like a constant uh, renewing, right? Checking in, being able to have those conversations. What's bothering you? Not letting things fester. It's like all the little things that build up to make something great. Yeah. And, and, that's, and that's why I say you should check on the couples in your circle. Mm. Because most of the time, by the time we realize something is going on with the couples in our circle yeah. is when they show up and say they're no longer together. Right. That part. 
Yeah. So, okay. So I'll tell this, right? So when, when Andy and I were dating and I saw it getting serious, I started to realize that a lot of his friends were divorced. And I was like, wait a second, mm. <laughs> this ain't going to be, you know, <laughs> this ain't the route. So I started praying about just how do we start to get around people that are like-minded, that celebrate marriage and mm. not like, girl, you got to leave him. Right. And so we both prayed about it. And so we have about five couples that we've, we've been rocking about a decade with that are like non-negotiable about mm. marriage of the same faith. And what's beautiful is we get together like every two weeks on Zoom since the pandemic. And what's beautiful is like, if we're going through something, we'll share it, you know? So it's, good. it's a vulnerability piece. Cause I find so often that we're prideful and we don't want to share, mm -hmm. you know, what's really going on, what's bothering us. And I'm right. You're wrong. You know, so we, we bring it forth and be like, nah, Kaz, you wrong. Nah, Andy, you wrong. You know? And, and I love that for us because then it allows a safe space to be able to get checked. Right. Right. Too often do we just go through life thinking we can do things the right way mm -hmm. and there's always another way for it to be done. So for, for me, I believe that has helped to fortify our marriage and we keep that mindset of we are not immune because we often get, oh, well, we want to be like y'all. Why? <laughs> Why you want to be like us? Like, don't put me on a pedestal. I can mess up tomorrow, you know? I, mm. I tell people all the time, whenever you see somebody on social media <laughs> and they like doing a lot, like build up their relationship a lot. Yeah. And everybody be relationship goals. Mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> well, There's a couple of telltale signs of social media. That's another Ooh. show. Ooh, I can tell no, you No, no. Signs. Come on. Telltale signs. Let's go. I can tell when a... <laughs> you all want to get into this. Come on, come on. This is wild. Because I can tell, like, a lot of times what we do on social is the mask what's going on in our real lives. Mm. And I'm not saying every time, but I'm saying a lot of times, right? Yeah. Like, like think about it. Just think about in the celebrity realm. Ooh. The people we build up the most as relationship goals mm -hmm. are the people we see broke up just years later. Yeah. And all these things happen. And we like, and then we feel betrayed. Mm -hmm. Like how? What? Right? Because we had so much invested into their relationship. Right. But you did. What you had a lot invested to was the pictures and video mm -hmm. and quotes that they put out. Right. But not what really happened. Mm. And that's what I tell people, you know, all the time. They'll say, well, well uh, uh, you and Ronnie, right? Power couple. Y'all are our relationship goals. Yeah. I was like, man, we was beefing last week. You know what I'm saying? Like, we saw the way you looked her at the conference. Yeah, because I was like, you tripping because we was arguing on the elevator on the way down. Right. Like, oh, but but I think it's like what people need to know is that all of that exists. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, like when you fall in love with somebody, that doesn't mean you then have a perfect relationship. Right. Right? Because me and Ronnie, not even the people we were. Mm. 20 years ago when we met. Yeah. Right? This would be um, uh, our 19th year, right, in September. Beautiful. She's not the same person she was in 2005 we got married. Right. I'm not the same person. But I think one of the keys is as we grow individually, we still try to check in so that we grow together. Yeah. And we don't start growing outwards yeah. at the same time. Oh, the growing together piece. So how, how do you do that? With with two different learning styles, two different ways that you operate. Now you're both in a different business that I'd love for you to touch on. And it's just like, how, how does that work? Probably constant communication um, and encouraging growth or being cool and open and honest with growth. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people like don't want you to actually grow and do your thing. Mm. But um, Ronnie's been very supportive of me in like this entrepreneurship piece, right? As we yeah. grow on and scaling and now we got all this team and all these people and things like that. But what I always tell her is that at any point, like this ain't your dream, it's mine. Right. At any point, when you ready, you would just be like, hey, I'm out. Let me go back. I got, you know, 17 years down, let me go get my other 33 and get my watch, right? I don't care, like, whatever. <laughs> you know, whenever she argue, uh, or not she argue, whenever she, um, if she complain about the business, like, man, I'm tired, I don't want to do it. I say, you know what? I fully support you going back, get a job. Mm. I'm here for you. Aww. And she'd be like, look, I ain't go that far. I'm just having a bad day. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like right. let's, let's not take this out of context, right? right? right. Just like, leave me alone. Tomorrow I'll be good. Mm -hmm. But I try to be supportive of her to say, hey, you know what? Like, you've done your time. Yeah. Like, I asked you to come in. You helped us get to the next level. You know, you definitely help us get further. But mm -hmm. you, if you want to go do something else, cool. You want to be a stay on my like, like, whatever you want, like, be happy in what you do. Wow. And that's one of my messages for, for anybody. You yeah. dating somebody, like, be happy with who you dating. Else, why date them? Why be there? Right. Don't try and build them up yeah. to be something they're not. In your career and, and no matter what it was. Hmm. This is Andy. So Andy, I, I was working a job, right? Still had my business on the side. And I'm like, babe, should I quit my job? He's like, that's your decision. I'm like, but babe, should I quit my job? That's your decision. This is like years of, can I quit my job now? 
that's the old decision. And it wasn't until I went to like a church retreat and it was like, you know, God spoke to me. I was like, oh, yes, now is the time. He was like, well, finally, welcome, you know, but he wanted it. <laughs> He won- I was like, you could have told me this earlier, uh, but I was scared, right? Would he support me? Would he mm-hmm. really have my back? Would he be like, you know, I got you. And this is like a whole nother world to really do feel that support that he supports what I'm doing, where I'm going, how I'm doing it, all that good stuff. And so the question is now. Since y'all work together all the time and you're doing all this business communication, mm-hmm. how do you shut that thing off? Um, I don't. I just don't share it all with her. Okay. Okay. And it's, and it's real. That's real. That's real, right? Mm-hmm. Because th- this is one of the things, you know, I say all the time, mm-hmm. as I get older, mm-hmm. the thing I love is I learn more about me. Okay. Right? Yeah. Like, I feel like self-discovery is the best. Like, the more you learn about you, the more you can not only protect yourself, but you can protect the people around you. Yeah. So what I know is that, like, she needs to shut it off. She's like, I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to talk business. I don't want to watch. But like, hey, if I like watching show, you know what kind of TV shows I like? Mm. Shows about business. I want to watch documentary about business. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like yeah. I'm, I'm in all the time. Mm. But I've learned, like, hey, you know what? She will watch that thing. She will watch another room. I'll watch my thing. We'll watch something separate. Yeah. Or when she, when she we together, I'm not going to watch this. Mm. I'll wait till she falls asleep. Then I'm going to cut this thing on and, and watch it on my own, right? Later. Um, but it's like, it's those different pieces. So a lot of, like I get ideas in, in like uh, visionary pieces about things all the time. Mm-hmm. I just learn how to shut it off and not share it with her okay. until we're in the confines of, hey, you know what? We're in one of our meetings. Hey, let me share this thing. Mm-hmm. Or I'll ask her like, hey, I got this idea. Um, can I share it with you? And, and sometimes, no. Yeah, sometimes she'd be no. I'd be like, all right, let's keep moving. Oh, that's beautiful. You should talk to Andy. All right. So, <laughs> <laughs> hallelujah. Okay. So, now, what made you pivot from love to business? Yeah. So, we had the brand, um, so Black and Kids is moving, is booming, is going. Um, and we enjoy it, mm. but it wasn't my hardcore passion. Mm. Like, my hardcore passion was around like business itself, right? Yeah. So, as we build that, uh, people saw us go from husband and wife writing articles to now we got writers, now we got an editor, now we got graphics. Now we start doing documentary films around marriage and life and stuff and screening those. Um, now we go from, hey, y'all like doing this in your bedroom at home. Now you got an office. So since they saw the business grow in a lot of press real publicly, then they started coming to me and saying, hey, can you teach me how to do it? Mm. And we started to, you know, we talked about it, started to pivot and shift and moved into our new brand, Traffic Sales and Profit, which ain't new no more. We're going to year nine with that. Wow. Um, but Traffic Sales and Profit, and eventually, two years ago, we sold Black and Mary Kids. Amazing. Okay, so I love Traffic Sales. Well, I love everything that you do, right? So for those who don't know, I'm in Lamar's. Well, Andy and I are in Lamar's Mastermind. And for me, it represents something so amazing to be in community. Like Andy asked me last night, are we not going to miss not one of his events? I'm like, no. <laughs> Tim, hey, that's the wrong question. <laughs> yeah. That's the wrong question, first of all. <laughs> like, no, because I feel the way you set up how you support us is in a way when we need you most. Mm-hmm. Right. So going back to that community thing, like I do the community in terms of love and you have this community in terms of business. And for us, it's like just this week, it was a really stressful week, stressful calls, stressful things, things not working, all the things. And when we're in day to day, Every everyday life, you can get caught up in the things mm-hmm. where you're like, I just want to give it all up. Just never mind. Why am I doing this? But I feel like you've created an atmosphere where entrepreneurs come together and say, wow, you're going through that too? Well, like, how can we work together? How do we support each other? Yep. How do we cheer each other on? How do we just show up and hold space? It doesn't even have to be financially. And I feel like you very intentionally curated that. What we learned is that the same thing entrepreneurs face, like the same thing the couples face. Mm. And in both of those, one of the best things you can do is get in community. Yeah. Because again, like like in my marriage, things are hard. It's tough. If I can't talk to my spouse, who can I talk to? I don't want people in my business. All those things we think, but then we find other couples going through the same thing. It instantly makes us feel like we're not crazy. Yeah. And it goes from something's wrong with me to this is just part of the process. Right. So we learned and, and just took the same thing we did with Black and Married and shifted it over to traffic, sales, and profit, where now entrepreneurs say, I'm not crazy. Mm. If I had a bad month or a bad year, that don't mean I'm a bad entrepreneur because everybody else had a bad year too, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> and I, I could just like get into it. But again, how we start to tell ourselves these stories is when we isolate ourselves. Yeah. 
And as people, like we need to be connected with other people. And as the world get more digital, it's even more important for us to be connected with other people. Right. And that's, that's what we learn. Like we need that connection. We need that support. We need that love from other people outside of just our immediate folks and our immediate, you know, relationships. And that's what we provide through traffic sales and profit. That's what we provide through Black and Married with Kids. So now in terms of business owners whose spouse isn't necessarily on board, right? Listen, I'm going to do this. Hey, this. a lot of times they think they're not on board. Ah. Because how they view them being on board is totally incorrect. Okay, come on. This is what would happen. This is what we would see consistently. Ronnie and I, when we were Black Bear kids, we, we spoke together all the time. Yeah. So we speak together. Um, oftentimes, um, this is relationship stuff. So, you know, the audience is all women. Yeah. Another story. But pretty much it is, right? So we speak, a wife will come up and say, man, I want my husband to support me in my business, right? And do what y'all do. Mm. But then Ronnie would say, well, where's your husband at right now? He at home watching the kids. That is support. Right. Right. So the lens of what we most time think support looks like is if I'm a speaker, I want my spouse to be speaking with me. Mm. Right. If I work in the office, I want my, my spouse to work in the office with me. Right. Nah, if you travel to conferences and your spouse is holding it down so that you don't have to worry about anything going on at the home front, that's what support looks like. Yeah. If the money that you're investing in your business is coming out of the family money, that's what support looks like. Yeah. Right. Like too many times we're trying to gauge what support looks like based on what we see other couples do or other couples be. Right. Instead of really looking at what do I have? In addition to that, the reason, I don't know, should I talk about this? Go ahead. <laughs> the re can I look at the camera? Yeah. I know. So. The reason a lot of times your husband, and your wife don't support you is because they've seen you in all the other things they supported and you not do what you're supposed to do. Ooh. <laughs> because we say, hey, you know what? Like, I want to invest, you know, this $30,000, $50,000 we got into the business. It's going to change everything. I need a website. I need this. I need that. It's going to be great. What they translate that to is, mm. you said that you wanted that Peloton bike. Mm. And then when you got the bike, you was going to work out, and it was going to save the money from the gym. <laughs> But you ain't, but you ain't, you ain't never rode the bike. Like when you go in to ride the bike, it's like the login screen come up because you ain't been there recently. And then you can't even log in because you don't know what the password is. Right? But then the only reason we got the bike and we went through with that is because I need the bike. Because remember, I joined the gym, but I don't go to the gym. Right. So we paying a monthly membership, but the bike is going to fix that. Like to say, this is the same person that supports you to go to the business conference, but you don't implement anything that you learn at the conference itself. But you come back and say the conference is amazing, mm -hmm. and then they looking at you whether they say anything or not. Three months later, six months later, a year later, and when you say it's time to go to the conference again, they remember the last time you went, nothing happened, but you spent our money. Ooh. So here's the thing: the people we're in relationship with knows everything about us. And they know every time we said we would do something, but we didn't. Mm. Ronnie knows all that about me. Mm -mm. The people in that know none of that about me. Right. So they view us through a totally different lens yeah. than everybody else. But it's easy for us to then go to everybody else and say, that person doesn't support me. And for everybody else to get on the bandwagon, because they don't know that you set yourself up to actually lack support. Sounds like apologies need to be rendered. <laughs> like, baby, I'm so sorry. You know it's the Peloton. I don't even know why you use Peloton. You know. You know, I mean, that's, oh, that's my normal example. <laughs> In the middle of it, I was like, oh, Coach Cass got one of them notes. Yes, you do. I've heard Andy complain yes, about exactly, yes, the exactly. Peloton. The Peloton is now his Peloton. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's his Peloton. Oh, my goodness. All right. So, all right. So, you know what? We're going to pan this to the audience because I feel like it's hot over here. You know, talking about people not using they, they Peloton. So, uh, are there any questions? in the audience system. Yes, this Alex. has been a fantastic conversation so far. Yeah, ladies. All right. So who has a question for us and where we want to start here? I know this young lady had a question. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you for this conversation. Um, yeah. I know we've been on the entrepreneurship piece, um, but I'm going to go back a little bit to the part where the love part mm -hmm. or the part when you first met her or the second part when you first met her and you felt like she's the one. 
How did you communicate that to her? Because sometimes, we'll, you know, guys will say it in their head or sometimes it's like, oh yeah, I really like you. I want you to be, but th- their actions don't really speak to it. And we interpret it as, well, they're supposed to do this and they should be texting me every day. And they, I sent this message, but there's things, but I guess it's a twofold. How do men communicate those things and feel like they're really doing their shit? Like, oh yeah, I, I got this. Right. But then how should women maybe interpret their form of communication. I don't know if that's. Yeah, it, it makes a lot of sense. Um, what I what I I'm gonna say what I did. And I'm gonna say I think this is what most dudes do. Um, what I did is I made it clear at a certain point, like, hey, we started this conversation about relationship. Like, hey, are we gonna be in a relationship or not? Because because this part is personality type. I don't like gray area. Mm. So like, either we in or we out. But I don't like gray area. And um, I told Cass is. Recently, because I was like, you probably never knew this. I actually was engaged before. Most people don't know that. This is a little, little dish. <laughs> Coach Cass, right? I was engaged, I was engaged before, and I was um, it's like years before uh, I met Ronnie with a young lady. But in our relationship, we had like it was like too much going on in a relationship. Like, like it's like we was arguing, bickering too much. And I was very clear in my mind that we weren't married. Right. And I feel like sometimes like that's the thing with, with women where it's like, hey, if we get to a certain point, we going to be married. Mm. But I don't think I think it's different with dudes. Right. I was like very clear that we're not married. So I was like at a certain point. All right. The way I'm viewing it is doing date is probably the best it's going to ever be mm. in a lot of ways. Right. Because that's when we got our little representatives out and we, you know, we whining and dining and we doing all of the... Ryan would be like, dude, when's the last time I got flowers? Mm. It's been a while. Because we was dating. Them flowers was at the door. Bing! Go find them. Bong! You know what I'm saying? Left and right. Um, now it's like a tree. You know what I'm saying? Oh, this is... Lots of flowers today. Hey, Bye. hey Bye. We, flowers. we all fall short. <laughs> we all fall short. <laughs> but, well, the first thing, like, like, I was very clear, like, hey, this ain't it. I would imagine, like, a lot of relationships, like, women like that's like, oh, no matter what we're going through, we're going to get married. I was very clear. I think dudes are very clear like this. No matter how long we've been together, right? Either we married or we not, and we weren't. So I cut the cord like, hey, because I'm like, if this ain't good now, mm. this probably is heading down the wrong way. Yeah. And I ended that relationship. I think that's probably one of the things. I think men and women just view relationships differently, which is why you see a 10, 15 year relationship with a woman that wants to be married mm. and is waiting for marriage mm. and feels like you married. And sometimes I even meet sisters that's afraid to publicly communicate that. Yeah. Cause you don't want to ruffle feathers, lose, do all the other things that come in, but then this dude will end that relationship and then be married to somebody else eh. immediately. Right? right. Three months later. And it's like, what happened? Where'd all this come from? So in my relationship, like I didn't want gray area. So at a certain point when I was like, hey, this is going to be serious, we started having talks like, what does that look like? And because we were long distance, it had to be a broader talk of like, cancer, like, like who move where with who? Right. So all that had to factor in. Yeah. Hey, would you ever consider moving? Would I consider moving, right? Which I told the time I was, I was open to it, mm. but she wanted to come up into DC and thought it'd be more opportunity. Okay. But we had to have like some additional conversations, conversations around the kids, right? Because she had two kids. So it was like different layers of conversations that needed to be had. And we had them. And then at a certain point, uh, I don't remember exactly what the language was 20 plus years ago now. But like I wanted to be clear that this is the area we were moving into. And what I do tell like um, women that are my friends is like, you deserve that. Hmm. Like you don't really, a dude don't have to say he going to marry you or do whatever, but you deserve to know what's up. Right. So that you can operate in a clear fashion and not be in a gray area yourself and not be lingering and waiting. Because too many times I see sisters, you know, kind of lingering and waiting in standby mode. <laughs> Oftentimes what a dude they internally know is not it. Right. But they just invest it in other ways. And then what happens is why you're tied up with that person for 10 years You've been blocking yourself from meeting the right person for the last 10 years. All the blessings. You're, you're specifically talking about one of my um, clients. So one of our members of the Real Love Network came to us and she's been in an eight-year relationship. Eight years, right? So after us talking, I said, sis, he's not it, right? And that's not always the greatest information that people want to know. I'm a direct kind of coach. So I remember her saying, Coach Cass, you don't know him though. 
Fast forward one year later, she still decided to stay with him, but there were very evident signs like being being having public displays of not okayness um, where she said, you know what, this isn't it. So she came to that decision on her own very peacefully. And since then, moving out, starting a new, she has a whole new sense of peace mm. that she didn't have before. And so when you talk about the bickering and the arguments and things of that sort, I often talk about like, is your relationship peaceful? Because it's yeah. just start out that way. Like we always end up with some things along the along the lines. But if you're not married to someone and you are in a constant roller coaster or you have to question where your relationship is or where is this going? Is this really, you know, all those extra questions. If you have all these extra questions, that's kind of telling you like, this ain't it. Yes. Like, this and, I, not it. and I think a lot of times we feel like we've invested so much. Right. That we don't want to let that go. Mm -hmm. But letting that go then is way better than letting it go five, ten years later, yeah. two, four kids more later. Right. You know, all the things that happen as we get more and more intertwined in each other's lives. Exactly. So so not to be dating out of convenience or staying in relationship because you don't want to teach someone else what you like, what you don't like, and all those things. You know, it's, it's really being a place of... Is this peaceful? That's, that's the core of it. Like, am I at peace? Yeah. I had a great conversation with Ronnie earlier this week where I was I was reflecting. Something made me think I'm reflecting on something. I, I, and, I, and I asked her because I'd be thinking one thing. She'd be like, well, let me tell you something else. But I asked, I said, I feel like us being together has had a positive impact on both of our lives mm. to where we both are better in better people, but yeah. in better situation, mm -hmm. better in life. Like, yeah. like. Us being married was a benefit to us both, mm -hmm. which is not always the case. Right. Right. Um, but being able to kind of just reflect on that. Yeah. So I, I really believe that when you marry the right person, which is why I deal with single women, when you when you choose the right person, when you marry the right person, like it's only up from there. It's like a husband is yeah. a cultivator. Like I, I find that so many women are focused on, oh, but I don't want him to get my money. Like, says, do you really have that much? Like when we look in the grand sc scheme of things, it's really nothing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you can have a house, a couple of houses, some rental properties. But when you're married to the right person, it's like everything triples. It quadruples quintuples I'm just making up words yeah so you know I'm my whole thing is to be able to get with the right person and when you marry the right person your life does get better and so when it comes to choosing the one I would say for me when um I chose Andy Beck right because <laughs> I believe that it is the woman's choice like you get down on a knee uh Chanel talks about how a man called on the phone but you know either way however somebody proposes you still have to say yes Right. You still have to be like, yes, you are the person I desire. And the reason I said that is really because he made me want to be a better person, like just mm. who he was as an individual. You know, the person that you're with, you should be inspired by their actions, not questioning it. Mm. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. All that. You should do this for a living. <laughs> you're, like, you're pretty good at this. You get know what I'm saying? Get yourself you together. Live. All right. Who's next? Who's next? Great conversation. So mm. Can you talk a little bit more about, I think you like opened my eyes about long distance relationships. Mm. I'm like, oh, you know, this is a whole space and there's a whole big world. And I'm like, eh, you only are 10 minutes away. Mm -hmm. And so can you talk a little bit more about like, so what do you do if your love language is touch? Well, oh, come on, <laughs> FaceTime. <laughs> you know, and what, so like, what, and, and then how do you circumvent how do you protect yourself against, because I'm not with you a lot. I don't see you a lot. Correct. I can't talk to you on the phone all day because we big and grown. So how do I stay comforted or feeling like I got somebody if you're not around? It, one of the things that uh, Ronnie would always um, say verbally, right, to me and the people in our circle, um, or at least that's what I'm going to tell y'all to say, because she didn't hear herself to defend. No, I'm serious. Here's what she said. One thing she always, she always commend me on is the fact that she could trust me and I never gave her reason not to. Because she had came out of a out of relationship herself where she said, like, I never felt comfortable. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, what, what? But she always, like, no, she always catch me. Like, it's just my manner to be like, hey, I'm heading out. I ain't asked for permission, but I'm just saying, like, hey, I'm heading out. This will be, I'll be back around this time. And I'm back around that time. I was like, like, like just my, it's more, it's more actions, right? Yeah. So that's the thing, like, because I have had, you know, um, you know, women that me and Ronnie knew that was in long distance relationships, and it was wild. You know what I'm saying? It's like this, it's my joy, right? Why? It's wild on both sides. So of course, you know, some bad things can happen, just like some bad things happen with somebody close. But I think, like, hey, 
Like you're looking at the actions mm -hmm. and you're probably looking at the actions even closer than you would if that person was right there because you're not together all the time. And, and like I said, are they, I feel like people either giving you all the signs to trust them or not. Ooh. Sometimes we choose to ignore those signs. Yeah. Or we choose to like put that in the back. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like communication, it ain't hard to catch somebody nowadays oh, and communicate, right? Not catch them back. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> traffic lights. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, but, but yeah. it, communication is easier than it's ever been. Yeah. You know, like even when we got like, like 20 years ago when we, we met. Mm. Like communication now compared to then is like light years right. ahead. The FaceTime. We could call me like like now FaceTime now is, you know, Messenger is 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 you know, oh. it's so many different ways we communicate other than just the phone like we did then. Right. To like I said, if somebody wants to be connected to you, they can. Ooh. This is good. This is right? good. Thank you. If you they want to be connected. Yes. Hello. Huh? Um, so I'm a pediatrician and I have a very traditional role. How can someone um, be more comfortable with, you know, meeting people who have more flexible or uh, more non-traditional occupations? Yeah, great, great question. Um, great question, especially in the city. If you're from local, like from Atlanta or a place like this, because I don't think these people really have real jobs. I don't know what they'd be. They'd be. <laughs> Ronnie be like, let's go to brunch at 10 o'clock and the joint be full with like a line. <laughs> I'm like, yo, what is up? But um, I think that's I think that's good, right? I think what it's about is meeting somebody that um like you two can mesh. And it don't mean necessarily you two are the same. Like I talked about me and Ronnie, like we're, we're total opposites in a lot of ways. Like I was the person, again, I worked two months, six months, three months. Then I might be off two months and be fine. Take something else, boom, boom, boom. Like she's one job the whole time. The thing is that we were able to come to a compromise in the middle and then, you know, get it together, do communicate and do being able to do it. I think the problem is when if somebody is not going to compromise with the fact that you have a more built-in schedule. The fact that, hey, I got, you know, patients that I got to see. I can't just, you know, fly off on a whim because these people are already on the books. You know, like I got these things and it's getting with somebody that understands that, respects that. And that's even if their lifestyle is different, they support and wrap themselves around you in that. And that's one of the things I always had to do with Ronnie because how I viewed work and everything was totally different than how she did. I was still was always supportive of the fact that she only worked one place. I wasn't trying to get her to change. Like, no, you should jump out here and do X, Y, Z. Because I knew for her internally, like, that's what she needed. So just trying to find somebody. Again, they don't have to be the... And I want to just folk like, too many times we look at people that's the same as us. Mm. Our strength of working together as a couple, as parents, and in business is the fact that those opposites yeah. actually cover each other in ways that we wouldn't do otherwise. Right. So where I'm a risk taker, She's conservative, but she always say, Lamar, you stretched me far outside of things that I ever would have done on my own. Wow. And I know she's grounded me in ways that I never was grounded before. If it was up to me, I'd probably have no house, no car. I just <laughs> gambled it all away on the next big opportunity. If it was up to her, she probably wouldn't, you know, have done as much or, you know, when it stretched as much because she would have played it so safe yeah. that there would have been no risk involved. Mm. So like, like I said, give her somebody where they don't have to be the same, but they're supportive of that role that you have. This is so good. Thank you. We have another question. I'm going to take it back to business. So I've been a full-time entrepreneur for 11 years, rolling on my own, you know, team here and there to help with events and such. My husband has always been super supportive, encouraging, kind of a marketing mind behind the scenes, very much behind the scenes. And uh, this past December, talking to my coach, I said, you know, have you, it's so frustrating to have a man that has all these different talents, all these different skills, but there's that one job out there that like can fulfill all those things. And she's like, I think the calling is for him to come on board into your company and be your COO. So in January, he actually did that. Awesome. And I'm the one that pushes him out of his comfort zone all the time. And so my question to you, Lamar, is like, what is your piece of advice? Because we've only, what, three or four months deep. I'm the bull in the China shop. Um, and so I'm just like, what's your piece of advice for a couple just starting to work together and, you know, making it work? Yeah, I would um, do a few things. One, always tell couples to do an exercise where you, um, you know, take a sheet of paper, draw a line down the middle, you know, write strengths on one side, weaknesses on the other. And 
you do two things. Number one, you identify what you view as your strengths, what you view as your weaknesses. Then you turn the sheet over, do the same thing. You identify what you feel like your husband's strengths and weaknesses are, and you talk. And I say, like, do this. I don't get you married, like, 50 years, five months, whatever. Because oftentimes what I've learned is that how we view ourselves and how other view ourselves is different. Now, the other thing we have to do is when we do that and always tell couples is that, hey, once we look at that, we have to then decide the delegation of duties, who's doing what. Because mm. it may be some things where Coach Cass may be great because functionally maybe when she worked a nine to five, like does she was technically trained to do that. Yeah. Or she might be educated, you know, formally educated to do that thing yeah. where Andy may be like, this is not my thing. So maybe things she got, she need to do. It may be thing on the other half where your spouse is just naturally God given talent and gift. It may be things sometimes I mean, right. And neither one of us like to do, but whoever's the most qualified got to do that. And what's wild is that sometimes there's even a separation because in our, our personal finances, like Ronnie manages those because I'm the dude with all the money in the bank that don't pay the bill. Mm. Like, that's me. It's like, I just forget. Oh, I see one of my, well, I see some, some kindred spirits in here, right? Yeah. But I'm, I'm that person, like the money be there. And I'd be like, okay, I need to pay that by the 15th. And then like a letter come in and Ronnie be like, what is that letter? And why is it? Did you not pay it? And I'm like, oh, my bad. I forgot. Won't happen again. <laughs> right? Um, so at home, she manages all of that. The business finances, because she's not really like the business is not her like or passion about it. And I think some of the stuff, it just like stress her out. So I handle all of that, right? Like I'm doing the meetings with the CFO. I'm looking at the projections, looking at the budget, doing all that stuff. And that's the stuff that excites me. So I'm actually way more into that than like paying the water bill or, you know, making sure we got lights and gas, right? Who needs that, right? Yeah. We can go out to eat if the stove is off. You know what I mean? We can make it happen. But that strengths and weaknesses part is heavy. And then probably one of the main things I'm going to share is that in the business, y'all will have to find your footing as you're probably doing now, right? With kind of who does what, because even the roles in the business, it's like, like I said, it's things we do at home that's totally different by how we operate in the business. But we also had to get okay with how the other people does, how the other person does things. Because mm. like Ronnie is like slow, methodical, and she'll be talking and she like on a second word and I just like jump to the tenth word. Because I'm like, I cannot wait for these other like eight words to manifest, right? I'm like... Let's get here, right? I got stuff to do. Um, on the other hand, she probably feel like I'm haphazard. I'm leaving out steps. Mm -hmm. Like I'm the bull in the china shop, right? So it drives her crazy. So we just had to kind of get to a point where if anything, we know we're the two people we can trust the most in this world. So I know like how you going to do it. It's going to irk me if I pay attention. So I'm just going to turn my head. But I know that on that day, you won't make it happen because we know we two make it happen people. Nice. Right. And she got to know I'm going to make it happen. And it's consistently like say, like, even if things don't mesh up, knowing that, hey, like I fully trust and resolve that person going to do it. And the, the real benefit cast mm. of when couples can't because a lot of times couples can't get on the same page to work right. together. If they can. It's not addition. It's exponential growth. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Because because now you got two people going in the same direction, not just in business, but in life. Wow. And now we have a common goal. Mm -hmm. And that common goal for our family propels the business even further. Yeah, that's nice. And, and I always say, like, the same thing that makes for a great partner is what makes for a great marriage. If I got a business partner, we got to be able to communicate. If I got a business partner, I got to be able to trust you. Yeah. If I got a business partner, right, we got to be able to delegate, like, who does what in the duties. Like, that's the same thing that makes for a happy and a great marriage. Yeah, that's beautiful. Oh. <laughs> this is great. Okay, we have another question. Yeah. So my question is, now that, you know, you guys have been together for 19 years and you've developed this synergy where you realize each other's strengths and weaknesses and you realize that she's more traditional and you're just a little bit more open. Um, what would you give your younger self when you guys first got together and you realized that she was the more traditional and you were the more open one? What advice would you give yourself on your approach to her being so traditional and her being a afraid, basically, when you said that, you know, you said, yeah, I'm going to quit my job. Yeah, I only work these contract jobs. She's like, no, 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 no. I need I need security. I need stability. Yeah. Knowing what you know now, how would you change your approach back then? Or would you have changed your approach or what would you have done better? Um, I mean, I. Back then, I did the main things you wanted, which I got a job, which I ain't like. But I, I, I did get a job back then, right? right. But um, probably 
I would have, um, I would have gave him more grace. Hmm. And and even like if it's something like even now it's something like I feel like we still need to give each other more grace, right? Because we are so different. Like when you're so different, a lot of times it's just like hard to get that person perspective. Yeah. Because you're so different, right? Um, but really just giving each other grace. And that like, and that's something I've been like over the years always trying to do. Cause it'll be, it might be something happening or something, you know, going to something to say, or something that like really bothers her. But in the back of my mind, I just know that she's wired differently to me. Mm. So where like I probably didn't give as much grace in the early days for that. Like as we get to know each other more, something I just know like she totally views the world totally different than I do. So I try to just give grace in those areas, even if it's something I don't agree with. Um, it allow her to go through her process she needs to go through to get there. Yeah. And probably earlier in time, uh, when I was younger, probably was like, I'm me expecting everybody to see things my way. Right. And then it's like, if you don't see things like this, you crazy. Like, what you doing? Right. Like, how could you not? Right. It's so evident. But like that grace part is probably something I wish I would have done more of. And I'm still like always practicing with. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. I think it's also remembering that we're always evolving. Right. And the more you get coaching, the more you get therapy, the more you're part of these communities, you learn something more about yourself. And it's like, oh, wow, that's why I do what I do. Let me communicate that. I think a big part of relationship is the vulnerability piece of, hey, you know, Mm. I just discovered this about myself. So for instance, like this week, um, or earlier this month, I, I was in a Bible study and they were talking about how anxiety and discontentment and frustration were a sin. I was like, say what? They're like, you have to trust God. Like, oh, like really trust God. And I started to become aware of how anxious I am and Mm. the things that cause anxiety from, from, you know, new clients to, is this working to, I'm taking these ladies to Bali to, you know, it's just like all these little things that cause anxiety. And when I shared, when I shared it with Andy, he was looking at me like a a deer in headlights. He's like, (laughs) you think like what? You know, it's like, I have never had any of these thoughts before in my life. You know, the Uber driver picks you up and it's like, am I going to die today? You know, like I have crazy thoughts. And so it's really being able to rein myself around, but I think it was kind of cool to express that to him and be Mm -hmm. like, oh, Okay, well, that's different, right? Like, he has no idea what's going on, but it's just a new awareness. I think it's also being constantly aware of what's going on with you, what you're discovering, and also sharing it with your partner. Yeah, I think that part is big. Because I was on the self-discovery earlier, but like like I said, sharing it with like the things you're finding out. And always tell people, like the more you know about yourself, you also can create systems around you to kind of, like again, protect you and other people, right? From you or how you operate or what you do and the things around it. So that's key. That's real good. So, Lamar, we're out of time. So do you uh, have any parting words? And also, how can people find you? I just would tell everybody, um, seek happiness. Right? But is a partner going to make you happy? The right partner will. Hmm. The right partner will, right? Like, like the right partner will change your life in all the right ways. Hmm. The wrong partner can change your life, too. But that's another episode. <laughs> but um, like I said, if you can find the right person, get on the same page, get on the same accord. And again, um, just knowing that you deserve happiness. Mm. Like that probably be my main thing. I, I think some people um, settle too many times in life, men and women. Yeah. They just like, you know, like like men go through a whole lot of things. Yeah. It just ain't cool for them to publicly talk about it. Mm-hmm. Right. But men and women a lot of times like go through unhappiness or just like that part, like you do deserve happiness. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times to get happiness, we have to become better ourselves. So I commend everybody watching this episode. I commend the people that take a step further and work with you. They go on retreats like that. Self work is everything. And one of the things I'll I'll leave with this, one of the things that Ronnie used to always say is that the period between her last relationship and this one was important because she said that was the time she's working on herself. Mm. And she's always telling me, like, if you had met me like a year earlier, I wasn't the one for you. She like said, I was like, I wasn't. She said it was just so much stuff and drama like going on around me in my life. Like we wouldn't have worked. Yeah. But like her taking that time to do that self-work in there, right, got her to where she was ready and open for whatever was coming her way. All of the things. Yeah, so I do that. And then you just find me online, uh, on social everywhere, Lamar Tyler, L-A-M-A-R-T-Y-L-E-R, and communicate, folks. They got to communicate. Like, that communication piece was big for us in the beginning. And if I communicate, if only I had a tool. If only I had a tool back then. <laughs> like these one and one. If only this, 
<laughs> Love dick. Listen, right? We we could have, oh, this is what got rid of so many issues. That's it. All right. I ain't got nothing more to say. All right, y'all. Thank you for tuning in to The Love Lens. Make sure to subscribe, follow, get yourself the love deck. Keep loving, keep laughing, keep living. Till next time. Bye-bye. Y'all